Oh shoot, dude. What what the hell are you doing here? Oh, yeah, I was just in the area, so I thought I'd drop in. See how you're like in the no 202. Dude, how the, how the hell did you get in here? The bathroom window was open, so I just crawled in through there. Pretty easy. By the way, your AC was like not even on, man. It is hot in here. I had to crank that. These chips are pretty good. Can't even out that one. Did you know that you only have basic cable? Mm -hmm. Like yeah, basic, oh, yeah. basic. Sure. So, dude, what do you want to watch on Netflix? Okay. Not everything belongs in your living room. For a quiet and compact companion, check out the Node 202 from Fractal Design. You can find more info in the description below. What's up guys? So back in June, I posted my review of the PCS Plus R9390X from PowerColor. And apart from a few minor setbacks, the card earned my vote of confidence. Well this month, the Taiwanese manufacturer has introduced a similar card to the market that now sports a more sophisticated cooling solution. This is the PowerColor Radeon R9390X Devil, but unlike the fiery demon himself, this card aims to stay vastly cooler than the competition thanks to its hybrid air and liquid cooled design. Under the hood, however, we're essentially dealing with the same enhanced Hawaii XT GPU on the 28nm GCN 1.1 architecture, with 2816 stream processing units and 8GB of GDDR5 on a 512-bit bus. We do get a slight core clock bump from 1060 to 1100 MHz, and a 1 or 2% increase in memory clock speed to 1525 MHz. Since the specs here are nothing terribly new or exciting, let's take a closer look at the real star of the show here. Me. I measure 67 inches tall with a striking aesthetic and... Oh, uh, apparently it's not me, it's the uh, the card's special hybrid cooler. <laughs> I guess we're saving the best for last. <laughs> the special design uses an all-in-one liquid solution to cool the GPU, while a 90mm fan and modest heatsink take care of the VRM and other components. A sensible combination, considering most of the heat generated by this card will likely come from our Hawaii XT chip. They really should have called that the devil. I should mention here that the pump block, 360mm long flexible rubber tubing, and 30mm thick 120 radiator are all OEM components from our friends over at Acetech. PowerColor has included its own radiator fan, but you do have the option to swap it out for one of your own choosing. There's also nothing stopping you from slapping on a second fan for a push-pull setup. Enclosing the core components is a black plastic shroud with brushed metallic plating around the VRM fan. While I find the silver accents to be a nice touch, the the rest of the enclosure looks and feels a bit like a child's toy, and I'd much rather it resemble an adult's toy if I had the choice. That way I'd know it could take a beating. This comes as a surprise when you consider the stellar build quality of PowerColor's more affordable air-cooled 390X. The card feels somewhat light for a card of its size, and tapping the shroud creates an off-putting hollow sound, probably due to the lack of a heatsink in place of the pump block. PowerColor's Devil series is typically regarded as their select line of video cards, yet when I look at this cooler, I don't see the same premium craftsmanship that's expected. Whatever this card sold its soul to the Devil for, it clearly wasn't its good looks. On the front, you get a small bio switch for separate custom profiles, a hybrid LED that lights up white, and a single 8-pin and 6-pin PCIe connector. Bear in mind that AMD's R9390X has an appetite for raw power, and this hybrid model is no exception, so make sure you've got a 750-watt power supply at minimum when running this card. Up top, PowerColor has included a reinforced backplate with some devil branding that spans the full 270mm length of the PCB and cooler. I should also warn not to be fooled by the card's pair of PCI slots. The monstrous height of the shroud in fact gives this card a 3 slot design, which will most likely hog up the PCI slot directly beneath it while giving less breathing room for that 90mm fan should you opt for a crossfire configuration. Finally on the back you get a nice mix of video outs including DisplayPort 1.2, HDMI 2.0, and two Dual-Link DVI. Now moving on to the card's actual performance. It is well known by now that Hawaii XT isn't the best overclocker, but thanks to the card's hybrid cooler I was able to bump the core clock frequency to 1170 megahertz. That's 45 megahertz more than I was able to push the PCS Plus 390X on air. Surely the higher clock speed would translate to slightly better gaming performance, yes? 
Unfortunately, that wasn't the case at all. Oddly enough, running all five of the tests that were used with the PCS Plus 390X yielded the same frame rates across the board. In fact, the results were so identical, at most a one frame per second difference, that I didn't even bother making benchmark slides for this card. If you want to see how the 390X Devil performs, just look at the benchmarks on my PCS Plus 390X video, because there's virtually no performance difference between the two, in terms of frames per second. Now I'm not sure if I just got unlucky with a sluggish GPU, or if this has something to do with how PowerColor bends their chips. But my testing speaks for itself, that if you're expecting the chilly temps of this card to bring home noticeable performance gains over an air-cooled 390X, for example, you just might be disappointed, like my wife on our honeymoon. Perhaps not even liquid cooling can make an overclocking beast out of the 390X. What the hybrid cooler can do, however, is make your GPU downright frosty, and this is by far and away the devil's saving grace. Throughout my testing, the chip stayed at a frigid 51 degrees Celsius, a colossal 17 degrees cooler than the PCS Plus. That's an incredible feat when trying to cool a hot-blooded chip like the Hawaii XT. Now naturally, less heat generated means a cooler interior for your chassis, especially when paired with a fan and radiator to quickly dispense the heat outside. So now that I have this big bag full of mixed feelings, where does this leave us in conclusion? Well for one, PowerColor needs to step up their build quality game for future Devil branded cards to keep its reputation of a premium product line. Additionally, the 390X wouldn't be my first GPU of choice to slap a liquid cooler onto given its low ceiling for overclocking. Now that being said, overclockers would probably get more mileage out of a similarly priced GTX 980, assuming they're willing to trade an AMD set of technologies for NVIDIA's. Now if your heart is still set on a 390X, I would personally favor the PCS Plus model which currently retails for about 70 bucks cheaper. However, if you don't plan on overclocking and superior thermal conditions are your top priority, you probably won't find a cooler 390X on the market than the 390X Devil from PowerColor.